So the next part in line is the uh, clamp that goes on the bottom of this carriage stop. If you look at the uh, assembly drawing, you see the clamp's just a piece of quarter inch steel with a couple tapped holes in it to uh, line up with the holes that we put in the in the body. And a couple screws go through it and it just, the screws when tightened up, pulls the clamp up against the bottom of the ways and locks the carriage stop to the way, the front way of the lathe. It's a pretty simple part. It's just uh, basically just a rectangle of quarter inch steel with a couple 5 16 18 tapped holes and then a, a notch cut out of here to clear the uh, the thimble. When we, eventually when we get around to making the thimble, um, the uh, clamp has a little notch in it to clear the clear the diameter of the thimble. So uh, first thing we're going to do is uh, saw out a piece of, piece of steel. Here's a piece of 3 8 hot rolled mild steel. Just going to saw out a chunk of this and start uh, squaring it up in the mill. So let's get over to the bandsaw and get started. So we need a part, uh, finished part one and five eighths long by one and one eighth wide and a quarter inch thick. So let's uh, cut out a piece about a sixteenth wider on, in each dimension, uh, inch and eleven sixteenths by one and three sixteenths. Nothing magic about that. One and three sixteenths by one, what did I say, one and eleven sixteenths? Yep, one and eleven sixteenths. I'm leaving a sixteenth total because aluminum might probably leave a little more, but for steel I, I cut it back some because it you know it takes a little little longer to machine steel. So we need something about like that. Um this blade's not really suited for steel. It's this is the one I use for aluminum. It's five teeth per inch, and uh, um, probably should use a bi a bimetal blade for the steel. It has a, a harder tooth on it, and something a little bit finer. So let's go ahead and change blades out. It's kind of a hassle on this bandsaw. It's not real easy, but something that has to be done. Sure, there are a lot of uh, these delta band saws out there. I'm sure, a lot of them made. All right, uh, let's let's fold this blade up. I don't know if you guys are. Familiar with the method of coiling a blade, let me, let me swing the camera around and show you how it's done. So the easiest way to do it, to coil a blade up, is just uh, hold it in front of you like this and step on it with your toe of your foot. And then you hold it with your, the palm of your hand up like this and just rotate the blade and push it down at the same time. Rotate the blade counterclockwise, and it'll you know fold up real nice like this. Okay. Another way to do it, it's more fun, is to just hold it in in both hands with the teeth up. The teeth are down. You can do it with the teeth down, but of course, blade like this, it kind of it's kind of hard on your hands. So hold it with the teeth up. Can you see that? I guess you can. And you just gotta kind of. Get the blade going down and twist your twist your uh, wrists in at the same time. It'll spin around and fold up pretty slick. Okay, so that's that's two ways to coil a bandsaw blade. Handy thing to know, and then you can just hang it on the side of your bandsaw and store them away nicely. All right, back to sawing. So this blade I'm going to use is a little thicker than the one that was on it, which means I'm going to have to uh, adjust the uh, the blade guides to clear it. So I'm just going to go ahead and loosen one of the guides and pull it out. 
make plenty of room for the new thicker blade. Can't quite reach that one, so I'll have to get in there and open it up a little bit. All right, make sure your teeth are cutting on the down stroke. They don't cut very well backwards. Don't ask me how I know that. I think everybody's put a blade in upside down at one time or another. Okay, this blade's also a little bit shorter than the other one, so open the wheel or drop the wheel down a little more. Most, most band saws, or this one anyway, most of these band saws have uh, marks on the, the tensioner to tell you how far to tension them. This is a half inch blade, so you just crank the indicator up until it reads half inch. Right about there, that should be good for tension. Now just go ahead and uh, push the guide back in until it touches the blade. Actually, this one, these guys are a little bit off center, so I'm going to adjust both of them, get them so the blade's centered. Just lightly touch the side of the blade. You don't want to get it too tight because then it'll drag. Okay, somewhere in there. Speed for, for this, this type of blade, you can probably you can probably get by with 125, 150 surface feet per minute. I know where that is, about where that is on this machine, so I'm just gonna go and set it up. I'm sure you know as well on yours where that is too. So let's uh Get the covers back on and saw this out. Bandsaw apart. Make sure the blade guides right just off the surface of the part, so you don't have so you have as little of the blade showing as possible. And I like to use a push stick. Just keep my fingers away from the blade, and it's also more comfortable. So when you're sawing in the bandsaw, I know I just went over this on a bandsaw safety video, but make sure you keep your thumbs off to the side. Don't you know? Don't hold apart with your thumbs like that because if you slip, it's easy to put your thumbs in the blade. So keep them off to the side. Maybe line mine up with the index finger. That way, if I slip, I go on by the blade rather than into it. Alright, all that's set up for a few seconds worth of sawing. But now we got our parts sawed out, let's move over to the mill and mill it square. Alright, so to square up this part, 
First thing we need to do is uh, machine the largest space in the part, which is one of these two, either the top or the bottom. Uh, I always start from the, from the largest face because that gives you the largest surface to reference off of for the other, the other five sides. Okay. So uh, I'll pick the, the straightest edge, it uh, looks like this one, and put it against the solid jaw. Okay, put that one against the solid jaw, center it up on the vise, and I like to use, uh, I like to put a piece of uh, aluminum welding rod between the uh, movable jaw and the part, just because it's a very rough, uneven surface, and it gives it a lot more even clamping pressure. Just tap it down a little bit, I'm going to be using a uh, fly cutter. Actually, I'm going to be using a fly cutter for all the, all the sides this time. Uh, we're cutting steel, so let's see, this fly cutter is about two inches in diameter. Uh, cutting speed of steel is 100, so four times 100 is 400 divided by two is about 800 RPM. 400 divided by two is about 200 RPM. Um, you can go a little bit bigger on a fly cutter because, uh, I've said it before, because a fly cutter dissipates heat faster than like an end mill, so you can get by a little higher speed. So we bump this up to 3, 350, somewhere in there. around in here. It's uh, hot rolled steel like this. The uh, surface is kind of kind of tough on the tool so just find out where it is, just touch it and then go down maybe 15 thousandths or so so you're well under the surface. So you don't chew up your tool when you machine it. If I lost you figuring out the RPM for this, there's a video that covers that that tells just how to do it. it gives you the formula and uh, example cutting speeds for different materials. Just watch that video. It will explain how, how I arrived at this particular RPM. Alright, so there's the first side. Okay, it's Nice cross hatch pattern on it. Means my head's trimmed in well. It's nice and perpendicular to the table. Uh, where'd my chip brush go here? Okay, so now I'm going to work off this surface I just machined and do the four edges. Again, I'm going to continue to use the uh, piece of uh, aluminum wire. Okay, we don't need to hammer anything down this uh, this time because everything's already everything that it's touching is rough, so we don't really care about that. more off on the first pass than you have to. Just enough to clean it up. If you go too far you risk going undersized when you clean the other side up. If it doesn't clean it, the other side's not quite as straight. So just take enough off to clean the first side up. Take the rest of the material off on the opposite side. I know I've gone all over all this before in my other videos on squaring up stock, but it never hurts to, uh, to review. Okay, so there's two sides. I'll get the burrs off. All 
Alright, so now I got this large flat. I don't know if you can see that. Let's see. Yeah, I got this large flat surface done on one edge, so I'm, now I'm just going to keep the large flat surface against the vise jaw and flip it 180. Put the surface I just machined down against the parallel. Notice I always put the part in the center of the vise because this, this jaw rotates and if you put the part over to one edge, as the jaw swings around it will only be gripping on one edge of the part and there's a risk of your part pivoting in the vise, moving on you. Not a good thing. Okay, now we have a finished surface down, so now I want to make sure that finished surface is down tight against the parallel. So we'll hammer it down, down snug. Okay, we'll take a trial, trial cut here and see where we are. spending a lot of time on it. As soon as I get enough cleaned up to measure, I can pull the part out and, and measure it. This uh, narrow dimension should be 1 and 1 eighth, and it is 1.162. So, 1.162 from 1.12, or 1.125 from that is 37 thousandths. So I'm just going to offset my dial on the knee to 37 thousandths from zero. I like to do it this way rather than set it at zero and then move up 37 because we tend to forget these numbers. This way, when, it, when the dial ends up on zero, the part's going to be to size. So I'm going to take all the 10,000 off on this cut. And we'll go back and take a 10,000 spinach cut. Pretty confident the size is going to be good, so I'm not going to check it. We'll just move right to zero and take finish cut going back. This will work out well because I'm fine milling on the finished edge, so I won't raise much of a burr. I always like to do that with end mills and ply cutters. I always fine mill on a facing like this. I know let the cutter take the burr off rather than create one. Most time I'm gonna let it finish the pass. Leave that nice crosshatch pattern. Alright. Go ahead and take off that burr. You can see how much less less burr it left that time. All right, now, now I have a choice. I can either rotate it 90 degrees and do one of the one of the two edges, the short edges, or I can flip it up and do this surface. I think I'll keep keep on going with the uh, the edges since the vise is already set there. <laughs> Going to need a uh, square. Another way to do this 
is to uh, use an end mill and let your part stick out past the vise like this. Okay, then you can end mill this, this or side mill this uh, end. But to do that, you're going to have to put something over on this side of the vise to make up the difference so the, the jaw doesn't cock. Like I said, it's, gonna, it's not going to grip the, the part that well it's when it's way out on the one side of the jaw like this. So I, always like to, I always like to throw a jack screw or something over here. In this case, I'm just going to continue on with my face, my fly cutter. Since we're all set up for that. So I'll just square the part up to the parallel on the bottom. I think I'm going to dispense with the uh, wire this time just because I only have three hands. I'm going to be taking a light cut off of this. cleaned up. That's good. A few more edges to deburr de now. So go ahead and make sure all the, all the burrs are off. Alright, now we don't need our square anymore. We can just set this right down on the parallel. This edge we just finished. Now I'm going to want to hammer it down, since i got a finished edge on the bottom, make sure it's down tight against the parallel. I always use a ball peen for this sort of thing, as long as I'm not hammering on a finish, finished surface. Because I, I like the way it feels, if I you know, hold the part with one hand and tap it with the, ball, the edge of the ball peen, I can feel just when it sits, seats on that parallel. Okay, a lot of people say, oh, you never want to use a ball peen for something like this, but it works. Okay? doesn't matter if it dents the part up because we're going to be machining that surface off anyway. And the part doesn't bounce, okay? And you, you can you hit it with the edge of the hammer. It, it makes it acts like a dead blow hammer. Puts it down nice and tight against the parallel. And it's easy to feel. You know, it's small. The hammer's small. It's not, it doesn't get in the way. And it's handy. Everybody's toolbox has one of these in. So let's go ahead and take a uh, cleanup cut on this surface. I don't care if it cleans up this time, I just want to make sure there's enough machine surface to measure. Alright, this one should be, this dimension should be 1 and 5 eighths. And we're at uh, 1.678. Punch that in my calculator before I forget. 1.678. All right, I've lost my wire, but well, there it is. So I'll have to hammer it down again. Anytime you take the part out to measure it, you got to hammer it back down. All right, so we want to know how far to go down to make it 1.125 or 1.625. 1.625 minus 53 thousandths to go. Offset my dial on the knee, 53 thousandths. And I'll take 
take all but all but ten. I'm gonna stay over here and machine it so I don't get hot chips all over me. Doesn't take long when you're working with a fly cutter to figure out where the chips are gonna go. After you get one down, you're sure to have sound in your arm. Alright, let's move it up 10,000 so we take a finish cut. We'll use the power feed for this one. Because we can. And I'm going. I'm conventional mowing this one so it's this way so it's going to have a little larger burr on the back side, but no problem. Nothing we can't file off. You can see the difference. Where are we at here? There you go. Let's see how much bigger the burr is when you're conventional milling. No match for a sharp file though. Make sure we get all the all the burrs off. I like to knock the corners off. Okay, so the only surface that's left, the last surface is the very top or bottom. Go back to our parallels I had in there to begin with. Set my part in the center. Tap her down with the hammer. Get underneath that uh, hot rolled surface. I'm not going to take this part out to measure it. I can get, get in there with a micrometer real easy to measure it. Save me the hassle of uh, putting the part back in. I just run the cutter aside. Make sure you turn it off. And we'll see what the thickness is. Okay, we are at 358. You got 358 and you want to be at 250. It means they have 108 thousandths to go. So I'll set my dials so I take off 108, I'll end up on zero. And I think I'll take 50 thousandths at a time. 100 is a little a pretty heavy cut with a fly cutter and steel. Here, here it grunt a little bit even with 50. So this is a good case where you have to know your machine. I, I know for a fact that these particular parallels Uh, about 235 below the top surface of the jaws, so I know if I take this part down to 250, I'm not going to run into the top of my jaws. Looks pretty close, but it's still still 15 thousandths or so above them when, when I finish the part. Up. say that a lot. You have to, you have to know your own machine because every, everyone's machine is different. Everyone has different uh, 
set up fixtures, everyone has different milling machines, different ways. You have to know your own equipment. That's why I don't often show what my hands are doing on the machines, because you know, your controls are going to be entirely different. important to see what the cutter's doing. Oops. Alright, now. Take it down, leave ten thousandths for the finished cut. I'm going to get the heck out of the way so I don't get chips on my short sleeve. that part kind of hard a minute ago so I'm gonna check it make sure nothing moved nothing being meaning the tool bit in the fly cutter so it should be 260 and we are 260 so nothing moved so I'll take off another 10 and that'll finish it up should finish up this part, get all the burrs off of it, and we'll set up and, uh, I don't know, we can either drill the holes, drill and tap the holes next, or we can uh, mill the notch in it. Um, now let's go ahead and mill the notch while we're, while we're milling. It's not going to make any difference in the order of operations. Alright, so that's finished. Finished part, squared up on all sides. Let me uh, turn the camera off for a minute and get set up for the uh, the holes.